Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. On page three of the uh, main calendar are resolutions. If we could begin with Assembly Resolution 1259 by Mr. Kim. Clerk will read. Resolution number 1259, Mr. Kim. Legislative resolution memorializing Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to proclaim May 2016 as Asian Pacific American Heritage Month in the state of New York. On the resolution, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 1260, Mr. Morelli. Legislative resolution memorializing Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to proclaim April 30th through May 7th, 2016 as Osteogenesis Imperfecta Awareness Week in the state of New York. On the resolution, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 1261, Mrs. Markey. Legislative resolution memorializing Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to proclaim May 7, 2016 as I Love My Park Day in the state of New York. On the resolution, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, those opposed, the resolution is adopted. Resolution number 1262, Mr. Lentall. Legislative resolution memorializing Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to proclaim the first week in May of 2016 as Health and Wellness Week in the state of New York. On the resolution, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Excuse me, Mr. Lentall, on the resolution. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Speaker. I, uh, I thought the group could have stayed, but unfortunately we were delayed in conference. And I wanted to point out that uh, since they're watching the proceedings today, that this particular resolution is a celebration of wellness, beginning with education in our state. And when I was in grade school, the only physical education we got was in the gym, doing jumping jacks. And now life has changed, wellness has changed, people are able to do yoga and mindfulness and understand how to get control of their bodies so that it improves their lives and helps them be better educated. So I'm very proud to be able to uh, introduce this resolution. And, and on a personal note, thank Mr. Henry Cross, who has developed yoga programs in our schools throughout my district. And it has been an immediate success. And I'm hoping that it will take root throughout the state of New York. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ms. Davila on the same subject. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I would also like to say a couple of words on behalf of uh, Mr. Cross. Um, Mr. Cross runs a, a very dynamic uh, group of individuals who have taken my public schools to, a, to levels I could not ever imagine. About a year ago, uh, Henry Cross came to my district office to talk about health and wellness programming for elementary and junior high school children. So together we started a small pilot program which entails a five or 10 minute breathing and stretching exercise that helps children to focus on education and develop coping skills in what we can, what we can consider a stressful school environment. I am very proud to say that from that one project, one project success, so NEMA has expanded to two more schools in my district. It is very important that we continue to show our children health and wellness skills that will follow them throughout their lives and that they can teach others. Therefore, I am proud to introduce Mr. Henry Cross, which is not here, but they are watching, um, from the SONIMA Foundation, Kate Lieberman, SONIMA wellness teacher at PS196, Michael Cork, Research Director, Daryl Daly uh, from the New York State Department of Education. And lastly, but not least, um, there was a parent here earlier today. His name is Mr. Hector Cruz Sr. and his son, Hector Cruz Jr. Um, and they are proof that this program works. I was fortunate enough to get a quick lesson from Hector Jr. today, um, so it made my day a, a lot easier today. So, Mr. Speaker, can you please extend the cordialities of the floor to Sonima Foundation? Thank you. 
On the resolution, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 1263, Mr. Thiel. Legislative resolution memorializing Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to proclaim May 2016 as Lupus Awareness Month in the state of New York. All, on the resolution, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 1264, Ms. Lepardo. Legislative resolution memorializing Governor Andrew M. Cuomo to proclaim May 2016 as Motorcycle Safety and Awareness Month in the state of New York. On the resolution, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Opposed, no. The resolution is adopted. Mr. Morelli. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Before I call up our uh, first bill, uh, I'd like to um, ask members of the Ways and Means Committee to convene in the Speaker's Conference Room. Mr. Farrell uh, is awaiting members of the Ways and Means Committee. Ways and Means Speaker's Conference Room immediately. Thank you, sir. If we can now go to page 46 of our uh, main calendar. We're going to begin with calendar number 510 by Ms. People Stokes. Clerk will read. Assembly 7853, calendar 510, Mrs. Peoples Stokes, an act to amend the Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation Law. Read the last section. This act shall take effect immediately. Clerk will record the vote. Mr. Morelli. Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's taken us a while to get to it, but this is our first vote of the day, so I'd encourage uh, everyone to uh, cast it, and uh, those who are uh, listening to the proceedings and haven't made their way over, we'd encourage them to do that so they may cast their first vote of the day. Certainly. First vote of the day, members, please come to the chamber, cast your vote. If you're in your chair, vote now. Thank you.
Are there any other votes? Announce the results. Ayes 116, noes 0. Bill is passed. Semper Ms. Eight. Morelli? Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Speaker. Uh, if I could ask uh, for a little order here, ask people to uh, take their conversation outside the chamber. We, we have Please, a can everyone take your conversation somewhere else? Thank you. Out of here. <laughs> Thank you. We have um, a uh, package of bills that constitute our Earth uh, Day agenda, and I know that uh, we're going to be uh, uh, go through these. And I want to give the members uh, a list of the bills that we're going to take up uh, this afternoon, in the order in which we're going to take them up. The first, we're going to begin with calendar number 217 on page 20 by Mr. Engelbright. We're going to follow that with calendar number 139, which is on page 14, by Ms. People Stokes. Uh, on page 15, calendar number 149, also by Ms. People Stokes. Then we're going to take up Mr. Cavanaugh's calendar number 221 on page 20. And we're going to conclude on page 36 of the main calendar with calendar number 410 by Mr. Simberwitz. The clerk will read. Assembly 5612A, calendar 217, Mr. Engelbright, an act to amend the environmental conservation law. An explanation has been requested, Mr. Engelbright. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, let me just first give a, a, a context, uh, developing infants and children are particularly vulnerable to toxic chemicals and the growing body of evidence highlights how children may suffer disproportionately from their effects. Children's neurological, immunological, digestive, and other bodily systems are still growing and developing. Exposures to toxic substances during infancy can be dramatically more harmful than later in life and are now being linked to rising rates of diseases such as asthma, learning and developmental disabilities, infertility, cancer, obesity, and diabetes. This bill attempts in a preventive way to address this rising issue. The bill will create, if becoming law, a list of priority chemicals and chemicals of high concern. These lists would allow New York State DEC to prioritize and better manage the most dangerous chemicals in children's products. The bill would call on manufacturers to disclose information about whether chemicals on that list were in the products they sold in New York. The bill will also protect New York's children from dangerous chemicals that are persistent, bioaccumulative, and toxic, and found to be in children's products by banning use of those chemicals in products that are targeted for children. Mr. Stock? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Would the sponsor yield? I'd be pleased to yield, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. I appreciated your explanation, and certainly I agree with you. I think everyone in this chamber agrees with you. Less toxins is better. Child safety is important to all of us. Um, but as we've de debated many other issues, this one harkens back to similar other debates that we've had. It's always about process and a, a cost-benefit analysis. Uh, for example, my opinion, um, if we wanted less uh, uh, wildfire or less you know, fire damage in our communities, we would have more firemen and, and more uh, apparatus on the, on the street. If we wanted less crime, we would have more uh, um, uh, cops on every corner. Uh, but the debate then becomes striking that balance between risk and return, uh, and, you know, and, and certainly, uh, you know, if we wanted no uh, child product safety issues, all the kids would be playing with wooden toys, and uh, we could avoid all that. So it's all about striking that balance. But with that said, I mean, I certainly agree with the spirit. I understand uh, your, your goal and intent is a noble one here. But uh, I, I, I do question and, uh, the process. I, now, I see that this is an A version of the bill. Um, can you uh, summarize what some of the changes were made? Because my understanding is that there were significant changes 
And I'm curious what brought them about, the, uh, the changes from the original to the A version. Some of the changes are the result of uh, our continued uh, research and insight. Uh, some of the changes are the result of our debate last year, uh, parts of which, uh, while there were, we were able to, to have an argument, uh, were distracting. And uh, there's no need uh, to have an argument over uh, some of the, uh, the microscopic uh, issues uh, that led to so much time being spent uh, debating last year. Yep. And so uh, we've made some adjustments. These include uh, an explicit list of chemicals rather than a reference to chemicals that uh, were listed by uh, the uh, Environmental Department of Maine, uh, the posting of notice provisions on the DEC's website, and a small business exemption would uh, no longer apply only to New York State businesses, um, and uh, the date of the sales prohibition is moved back one year. Why, um, what, I, I, I've seen those changes. Um, one other change that I noticed that uh, having two paper mills in my district, um, I, I, I question or I have some concern. Paper or forest products are removed from the list uh, um, from exemptions. Uh, you know, why would we, why would we necessarily do, do that? We're, we, the changes we made are made to make the uh, proposed law work better uh, to protect children. And it was um, thought that this would help in that regard. Okay. One of, one of the other uh, concerns that I know we had in previous years, I know I have now, I, I often and my colleagues have this concern on this and, and several other similar bills that try to address uh, or tailor a, uh, what could be a national market to a state-specific market and thus changing uh, uh, and, or adding an additional challenge or burden to New York State businesses and certainly interstate commerce. But in, in working on the DEC budget as we do, we have the, the hearings on the budget process. And uh, in my district, DEC issues are very important because they affect a lot of what, what happens in the Adirondacks. But statewide, DEC's spread pretty thin already. And one of the concerns that I have and, and certainly comes out in opposition memos has been, does the DEC have these tools and resources to take on what many argue would be a, a significant additional burden in their workload? Well, the DEC uh, is not alone. The uh, New York State Health Department uh, plays an important uh, and contributing role here. Um, I agree with you. I wish that uh, all of our agencies were more robust, uh, but that does not lessen the need to put this law, uh, this proposed law, into effect. Um, and uh, we have uh, a small fee uh, that uh, uh, would be applied to some of the costs, but it is very small, hardly worth mentioning. Your point is well taken in terms of uh, the need of the agency uh, to be able to manage its uh, responsibilities. And the balance that we seek uh, is cognizant of the occasional severe limitations that the department has, uh, but we're also cognizant of the reality that the future of our state and each of our communities and all of the families that sent us here depend upon having a healthful environment. And it is unconscionable to not do our level best to make sure that toxic substances are not brought into, con into contact with children. That is needless. And simply by establishing uh, new expectations and sort of rules of the, of the game, uh, I think we can uh, save children from a lot of harm. Right. Um, well, certainly you would agree, though, that the federal government already has its own laws and regulations in place nationally on product safety, including uh, chemical safety in products. The, uh, the federal government has uh, uh, a pretty weak uh, law. Uh, there were massive exemptions made when the law was put into effect 
uh, originally. Uh, and now with the growing list of chemicals, uh, over 80,000 chemicals and only 200 have been tested. Uh, none have been banned, not even asbestos. Uh, even the EPA administrator has criticized the effectiveness of the federal laws. And so it is, again, with an emphasis on protecting our children in our state and being consistent, quite frankly, with other states that have preceded us in setting their own standards. It is within that context that we have put forward this proposed law. Um, one or two final quick questions. Again, now I'm going to focus a little more on process as far as uh, our legislative process. Um, uh, how, how long has this bill been around? I mean, it, I could see it goes back at least to 2010. Does it go back much farther than that? I think your count is correct. And uh, it currently, as of my, my latest information off the tablet, does not have a Senate same as? Uh, not a same as, but uh, we have a, a similar bill, and we'd uh, love to pass uh, our version and, and reconcile the two uh, versions uh, to send it to the governor's desk. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Madam Speaker, on the bill. On the bill. Thank you. Um, as I said in my opening uh, preamble to my questions, uh, and I thank the chairman for his time and his sincerity uh, in his effort and his answers. Um, you know, this, uh, the issues I have in, in broadness uh, are not to say that we're not concerned about raising the bar uh, on our product safety and certainly on our child, uh, ch children's safety. Um, but with that said, uh, um, there's a mechanism in place that ought to be used, is better suited to be used, and frankly would be more fairly uh, um, implemented on our businesses and businesses around the, the country, and that is to use the federal government and its powers uh, and perhaps lobby them to strengthen uh, these, their existing laws. I, I view this as similar to many other debates that we've had on similar issues where we were going to change uh, requirements just to, to New York specific and the burden that that puts on our businesses trying to do business outside the state and certainly other businesses trying to do uh, business inside the state. And I point to the microbead bill. Now, uh, you know, again, microbeads, they're on their way out anyways. The industry was getting away from them. They, uh, um, I don't think anyone was championing that we needed them in the product. Uh, but New York wanted to, to go its own way, and we had that debate, and we had a vote on that here, and I don't believe that had a Senate same as either. But, and maybe because of that effort, and if, that's, and if that, that was the result of, of this effort, then perhaps this is a worthwhile exercise. But the federal government did the right thing. They stepped in, and they addressed it on a national basis, and problem solved. And not only now does it just benefit New York, but it benefits the entire country without burdening New York specific, or I mean, imagine if you will, somebody that's doing, uh, you know, uh, uh, shampoo manufacturer in, in Ohio is, is ma making their shampoo that goes to international distribution, and now they got to say, well, we got to stop, we got to shut down, we got to change over to make the New York version of this product. Um, th that's a burden on them. Now, perhaps we don't care about businesses in Ohio, um, but one could argue that, uh, you know, that that overall extra burden on our on our business climate in the country, uh, and certainly I think it would have a negative impact here in New York State, is a factor to be considered. Um, and in that vein, I'll just point out for my colleagues, and then I'll, I'll be finished with my debate, the Business Council uh, uh, is opposed to this. It says that they would give DEC and DOH broad authority to undergo a chemical review process that they're unequipped to handle. So they're concerned about whether DEC and DOH are capable of handling this added, uh, added uh, uh, workload. The broad def it would broaden the definition of child's product and cover all, almost any consumer product. Uh, so this is the business council that's telling us that they don't like it. NFIB would greatly overstep current federal mandates and regulations in these areas. Uh, American Chemistry Council, it's predicated that there is inadequate protection for consumers in existing marketplace, and it points out that there's already a, an abundance of precaution factored into 14 existing federal laws and regulations that current govern, govern product safety. Um, New York Chemistry Council, Retail Council, Fashion Jewelry Trade Association, Grocery Manufacturers Association, that's Toy right. Industry, all right, that's no surprise there, American Cleaning Institute, Personal Care Products Council, Carpet and Rug Institute, Consumer Specialty Products Association, International Formula Council, uh, Coke, uh, Coke Companies, Vinyl Institute, New York uh, Corn Growers Association, not sure exactly where the corn growers are coming from on this, other than maybe they see a, a, just a, a, a shortage here in uh, effectiveness here. Unshackle Up State, 
um, the Rochester Business Alliance. Uh, there's about a half a dozen, a dozen more uh, organizations similar to that that are all basically saying the same thing. They think it's an overstep. They think that it's bad for all business. They think that it's a better house than the federal government. And uh, they think that DEC and DOH uh, is not equipped to handle this. And I tend to agree with them, certainly on that final point. So for those reasons, sadly, although um, uh, uh, you know, I am concerned that it's wrapped in the, uh, you know, the, the, the cloak of uh, you know, protecting children, I don't think this bill is uh, the right way to go. I think the best way to go is to encourage this kind of mo motion at the federal level, similarly to what happened with microbeads. I think that was a win, and I think that we should uh, better focus our energies on lobbying the federal government to do their job, and we should focus on the business of our job here in New York State. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, sir. Mr. Goodell. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would the sponsor yield? Mr. Engelbright, will you yield? Yield. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Engelbright. Uh, first, uh, I want to uh, thank you for making many of the changes that were made in this draft compared to the earlier draft. As you know, the earlier draft that, that defined New York law based on what Maine legislators did kind of caused me heartburn since it well we uh, I appreciate you took that out and so thank well, thank you. you thank you and thank you for pointing out uh, the need to make those changes and for uh, working with us uh, and uh, I also remember uh, the implication being that uh, you would support this bill if we made these changes uh, well, of course we'll have to see let me help clarify <laughs> that <laughs> I, I no longer object to those uh, provisions that have been amended, so thank you. Uh, I was hoping you could give us a little bit of uh, background on the severity of this issue. As you know, every year we read reports, tragic reports, of uh, young children that die after consuming household chemicals, for example, or uh, or overdosing on something as common as aspirin or acetaminophen or, or, or things of that nature. Do you have any uh, empirical data as to the extent of health risks, documented health risks that's affiliated with children's toys? We don't have uh, a uh, uh, a lexicon of injuries and indeed it's difficult to actually document many of those uh, those injuries because they manifest themselves later in life infertility for example uh, being brought on by exposure to heavy metals uh, is something that you would not know about until a decade or two later these, uh, we, we do have enough knowledge about the basic negative impact uh, to have uh, strong support for uh, this legislation from the American Academy of Pediatrics, uh, who have uh, issued a memorandum of support along with dozens of other organizations. And do those uh, reports that you reference have any empirical data that purports to document the nature ex or extent? I mean, these chemicals we're talking about here, they've been around since the foundation of Earth, like lead, for example. And mercury is not a new, uh, certainly, uh, cadmium, cobalt. I mean, these are materials that have been around for, for some of them, they're elementary. Uh, well, elements. there's a difference between materials and elements. Uh, yes, the element of lead uh, is a breakdown product of uh, uranium and is something that uh, has been around for a long time. It's a separate element into itself. But many of these substances are created in chemical laboratories and have not been around for a long time and are growing in their number, and those are chemical compounds, uh, and the bill provides for those to be uh, uh, basically analyzed and listed 
and uh, to keep a, a, a close watch on the growing list. Uh, I appreciate that the general concern and, and from your comments I suspect that we don't have any hard empirical data that documents the nature or extent of this, but can I change my focus a little bit and ask some specific questions on the language. You define children as being those who are 12 and under. Mm -hmm. So am I correct then that this language does not ban the sale of toys or other products aimed at children 13 and older? We have established 12, the age 12, uh, as a, a, a very conservative cutoff uh, of, for the definition. You could easily have gone to, uh, you know, the late teen years. Uh, but this bill establishes as 12 and under, right? It does. Now, often when I've been shopping uh, for, uh, sadly, grandkids, ooh, I mean, I love them, but who would have thought I would have them? Um, but, you know, our great nieces and nephews, I notice that toys often have a number on them. It says for kids 10 and under or 12 and under or whatever. And this bill uh, focuses just on toys that are primarily marketed or manufactured for kids 12 and under. So if a manufacturer puts a sticker on the box that says for children 13 and older, do they avoid the scope of this bill? It's interesting that you, that you uh, raise that question because the question of children uh, and how you define them, I guess, uh, really should be uh, a focus. I note with great interest, for example, that the New York Business United for Product Safety Coalition, which includes the Business Council uh, the Manufacturers Association, the American Chemi Chemistry Council, uh, and others, in their page and a half letter of opposition, does not mention the word children. They just simply oppose it as if the factor of age and the reality of children having uh, greater uh, vulnerability to exposures due to their developing immune systems and, and uh, uh, different uh, bodily metabolism uh, is not apparently a factor uh, and that they should even consider. And We've yeah. done our best to do so, and we have, by the way, uh, looked at uh, certain of the chemicals. There are two lists that we would have the DEC uh, I'm, be attentive I'm, to. I'm aware one of that. Of which but I, my question was just, just about relating ten to the age and chemicals. And I appreciate that, Mr. Engelwright. But you know, my question. I just want to make it clear that this bill only applies for young kids, not older kids. And I understand that there are a number of organizations and entities that don't think there's any need for legislation at all. And this bill only legislates for Apparently, they don't recognize younger. that there are differences between children of any age. Right. Uh, that's certainly a factor. Now, your bill provides for two classes of chemicals. You were starting to talk about that, a priority chemical and a chemical of high concern. And we ban the sale of any toy that has any uh, chemicals, uh, priority chemicals, right? After, can, uh, a, and, after a certain right. period of time. And, yes. and uh, to go from a chemical of concern to a priority chemical, uh, the DEC has to establish first that the chemical is in a toy and... Let me, let me just parenthetically point out this does not deal just with toys. But it it's requires that... all products that come into contact with children. Okay. That would include toys, as you rightly point out, but it would also include bedding, Clothing, and, I, and, and you're right, it, it references children's products. And then it has to do one of four other criteria. 